you. It's great to meet you all and thank you, Samath, very much for the opportunity. Can you just confirm for me, Samath, quickly that my screen is still being shown with the uh, background, no, the all no. blue background? No, there's no screen. I can't see okay. the screen. So let's get the screen sharing if I'm able to do it. Uh, ah, could you please give me the um, option two screen share, Sam? It's, it's, it's there. I've got it on. I'm. Ah, here we go. So if we go screen two. So you all could have a quick thumbs up that you can all see the presentation now. How to increase your sales slides. Is that no people can't see it? Yeah, yeah, I think you can see it. Oh, we've got to I can see some yeah. thumbs up. Great. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, so hi guys, my name's James Berg. And for those of you who don't know me or don't know of my father, so my dad Phil Berg, I believe, knows Sampath through BNI. I'm unfortunately not a BNI member to anyone that is, but what I do is I've spent the last five to ten years working with a few different organizations. So I started my career at ESBM, the sports channel. Then I moved to a company called Ketchum, where I was doing digital insights for brands such as IBM, Samsung, P&G, and working with all different home care brands and all different types of digital insights was my main thing. Whilst I was there, I created a book called 104 Social Media Content Ideas to Increase Sales. And that is very much about tactical, helping businesses very quickly and effectively create content. Off the back of that book, then I moved on to a company called McCann, and I worked in healthcare, working with GSK, with Bupa, with pharmaceuticals, and there my main role was content strategy. So it was taking insights and understanding and turning them into actionable plans for our clients. Through all of that, my main thinking, and I suppose some of you are thinking, where the hell does Pirate come into this? So over a number of years and working with big corporations, and I can already tell from the way some of you spoke about your businesses that there's some pirate thinkers here and everyone's starting to think like that of what I found was there's so many organizations who are doing things in a much more complicated way than they need to be done. There's the way the pirates think is, is there a better way? So if you take it way back, and I know later on we do a bit of a chat, Sampath will take through a bit of the more pirate thinking. But what it really comes from is when I worked in social media, I went, this is ridiculous. We've all these big companies trying to chase likes and followers. Shouldn't they be trying to chase actual sales, donations or leads, like actual action from their content, real metrics that are going to help their business? And that type of thinking, I found that by me challenging people on that, I was becoming a bit of a pirate because it was that kind of rebelling against the way things are done. But then also my aim, what the pirates did was present better solutions and better alternatives. So from that, I've launched my own company, Picaroons, which directly translates to mean the word pirate. It's an old terminology for it. And what we do at Picaroons is we help businesses increase their sales, donations or leads. We do that through strategies. So through actually actioning, here's the type of story you should tell online. And then we also do it through content creation. So I've got some of the best videographers, photographers, animators, graphic designers in and around London who've worked on all manner of brands, working with me on a freelance basis so I can bring them in to service our clients. So within about six months of trading so far, I'm very proud to say that with the team, we've managed to get Facebook as a client. So I'm currently helping them with some strategy. And we're working with a few other organizations, including, I told Sampath about this one, it's called Behind Bras, one of my favorite clients. And it's women who are in prison, training them in fashion and textiles, so that when they leave prison, they can move into employment. So what I'm going to be taking you through over the next 20 minutes or so is, I've got a workshop that I run. And the aim is to teach you how to create a social media strategy. I can do that in a day and I could do it all the way down to 20, 30 minutes. Obviously, it's the amount of detail that we go into. If you do have any paper in front of you or anything to write down, please do have that because my aim for you is that at the end of this, you're going to have the beginnings of a guide to give you a name of what to do on social media. And for those of you who are already using social media, I'm not here to go, you need to rip up everything you're doing. The aim of this is that this will hopefully 
give you a nice framework to help with what you're currently doing and perhaps build on it and give you some other tips. So I hope you're really excited for this and I hope that if you've got any questions, please do put them throughout. But I believe Sampath will be answering any and all questions at the end so we can really go into some more details and support you how to action this. Sound good? Yep. Great. So, see if my slide changes. So this is my aim. My aim for this session is by the end of it, you will leave with a creative content strategy that's actually gonna help you not just create content, but do it on a consistent basis. I'm sure those of you who are putting the content out already know that sometimes we can put it out, but we don't get that kind of result. So it's about consistently putting things out, putting messages so we can see those results that we desire. So this is my thing. This is where the pirate thinking comes into it. How do you increase your sales using social media? It's a question a lot of people ask me, and there's all these experts out there putting out advice of, you should do paid ads, you should do this, you should invest in video, you should invest in this. But what I found is it all comes down to one very simple thing, and that is you need to be interesting. If you are interesting online, you will increase your sales. It's about pulling people into you as opposed to feeling like you're always pushing your marketing at them. So this is a slide I love to show people. And back before I ran my own company, sometimes I got told off by my managers for pulling this in, but the client always understood it by the end. And this is where I say to people, if you look here, this is your customer's life. They've got a lot going on. That thing you do occupies a very small part of their life. And this is the bit with the pirate thinking. I say to people, no one cares about you. And I know that doesn't sound very nice, but there's two positives I take from that. The first one is that because no one cares about you, we don't need to keep overthinking so much what we're putting out there. We spend ages and ages and ages thinking, oh, is this gonna work? Is it gonna land? And sometimes it's just about actually just get the content, try things, because when people are scrolling, it's very easy just to scroll straight past your content. So we don't need to overthink. We're the only ones that are really thinking about, oh, was that post good, as opposed to our audience. And the second part of that, and, and most studies have been done that show it's around 5,000 advertising messages we each receive every day through social media, through billboards, through TV. So the second part of that is when you think where that thing you do is, there's also your competitors there. And there's also all the other organizations that aren't even competitors are also trying to get your target audience's attention. So this proves even more why we need to focus on being interesting to stand out in that sea of content. So this is kind of where my theory comes into play. And so far, it's proving again and again and again to be the most effective way of increasing your sales, your donations, your leads. And that is, as you can see, if you're interesting 90% of the time, you can sell to people the other 10. You can actually say, buy my product here, reach out to me here, sign up for my webinar here. Because when you're being interesting all that time, you've earned the right to sell. So using my book as an example, I hardly ever put any links up to say buy my book here. I will always put things that are interesting to my audience so that when I say buy my book here, every single time I get sales. And it's because the rest of the time I focus on that being interesting. And as I said, it's about you pulling your target audience in as opposed to you needing to push content at them. So the challenges, and look, I'm sure some of you are starting to think, yeah, this is all good, but I've got business to run. How am I going to have a chance for this? And these are the four main challenges that I normally find for people. And I'm sure some of you give a bit of a nod if you think, yeah, you can agree with this one. So the first one, some people just aren't sure why what and how to post on social media. That is a common challenge for audiences. Another one, especially as busy business owners, too time consuming. How have you got time when you've got a whole business to run to fully run the social media as well? And I always say to people, remember, these big companies have teams of people running all their different social media feeds. That's why they're always putting content out. That's why it's so much busier. So there's that time aspect. Then there's risk, and there's two sides to risk. There's one, the risk of being annoying. For some people, they think, I don't want to put out too much. I might annoy my audience. 
And then the other side of risk, and I used to have this a lot when I worked in healthcare, is the risk of putting out some confidential information or some information you're not allowed to do. And there's that risk. And the final one, just not seeing results, putting things out and not seeing those results. And we find in general, these are the four main challenges. I hope what I'm about to take you through is going to help you overcome and see, actually, I know how I can overcome these. There's kind of a fifth one, which I feel just by the fact that you're all here, hopefully you don't fall into this category. But the fifth one is people who just go, ah, social media is not valuable. You can't do business on social media. So for them, I always show this example. So I don't know if any of you have seen this before. But this is a tweet from a chap called Travis Kalanick. He said, I'm looking for an entrepreneurial product manager slash biz development killer for location-based service, pre-launch, big equity, big peaks involved, any tips? One tweet. So he put that out. Within about 10, 15 minutes, a few of his friends retweeted it and people contacted to him. And this chap, Ryan, responded. He said, here's a tip. Email me. So Ryan had been out of work. He was a business development manager and he was looking for some employment. They connected. They chatted. They got to know each other. And through that one tweet, Ryan actually became one of the founding partners of Travis's company. It's quite cool, isn't it? Through Twitter, someone got a job. Especially if I tell you now that that company is what we all know as Uber. So Ryan, who responded to that tweet, when Uber, obviously their valuation went past a billion, billionaire from that tweet. So when people say to me, oh, business can't be done on social media, I say, look, it might take a load of posts to get people interested, but just one post on its own might connect you with that target audience you're looking to reach. So that's what we always find is they're kind of the challenges, the unsure why, what and how, too time consuming, the risk both of being annoying and also of getting something you're not allowed to say and not seeing results. My way to overcome all of these is this simple process. And this is what I'm gonna take you through quite quickly now. First one is plan. Have a plan in place, be creative, schedule, engage and learn. And that to me, and you can see here I've got in brackets, is how you're interesting. And in brackets, that's how you'll increase your sales. So this is the plan. This is how you overcome all those challenges. So the first one is plan. Now, a thumbs up if anyone's currently got a social media strategy in place for their business or for themselves. You see a couple there? Great. So as I said, the aim here is not for me to say, rip that plan up. It's for you to go, yep, yeah, I'm doing these things right and maybe build on it and some other techniques you might not have used before. So the first is I always say to people, choose two social media platforms. Unless if you've got a team of people, if you try and do it to all of them, you'll be overwhelmed, you won't have that time. It's choose one to two, focus all in on them. And then off the back of that, eventually you can start to grow. So I always recommend for business to business, obviously LinkedIn. Why? Because in LinkedIn, when you think, when you go on Instagram, you might be there to look at some nice pictures. When you go on Facebook, you might be looking to stay in contact with family. I'm not saying, by the way, business can't be done on those platforms. But when someone goes to LinkedIn, they are in a purely business mindset. They are ready to be sold to, to connect in with, to be educated. So I always recommend that. But the others, I just say, whatever you feel most comfortable with, if you are the only person who does what you do, doing very well on Instagram, you can do well. I always say there's all manner of uh, Mayersk, the shipping company. On Instagram, they just have a whole feed filled with beautiful images of their shipping containers, all the lovely colors. There is no reason why you can't use a platform if that's what you feel comfortable with. So we start by we're saying use two. Then I say, what's your objective? Clear, again, can I have a thumbs up if anyone's got a specific objective written down for social media? See a couple there. So again, my, my dad says, a goal without a plan is just a dream. You've got to have an objective in place. So these are normally some of the objectives. If you haven't got one, you can take from. And is it increased sales? Connect with possible partners, increase leads, build awareness, especially for charities we see a lot of wanting to build awareness, retaining users. Is it about just keeping your target audience connected? Improving sentiment, if you're in an industry that sometimes people might think is a bit more negative, improving that positive sentiment. Attracting new staff. Pretty much every one of my team has come to me through finding some of my content on Instagram or social media. 
and then going, oh, that's cool. Could I, I could make something like this. That's how you can find that spark. And then also promote an event, especially in a lot of our industries, if we're doing an event, it's a good way to do that. So once you've chosen one of these objectives, what I then say to people is, who is your target customer? And it's not just about doing it very broad. The more specific you can go, we say like a ripple effect. You know, you throw a rock into a lake and it ripples out. If you uber target your customer in, you'll still catch some others, but keep it uber focused. So for me, we always try and target people who think like pirates. We want to work with the people that want to push the boundaries of their industry. And by knowing that, it means you can start to create content for them. So once you know who's your target customer, this is one of my simple ones that I like of going, what is their main challenge or need? And guys, as I said, the kind of pirate thinking I try and put across is everything which is effective, but communicated in a very simple way. So for those of you who are looking at this and yeah, we've done this, great, you're pirates, you're already way ahead of a lot of people. And by getting all these steps and having that really in-depth target customer and going, what is their problem? And I say to me, the problem hasn't got to be massive. For local businesses, let's say if you're a plumber, it might be that your target audience don't have any plumbers in their local area. It could be as simple as that. And it's going, what's their challenge or what's their need? Do you remember mine? My audience, their challenge. They're unsure what to post. They're too time consuming. You know those challenges. And what you then do, and this is my very, obviously when I create these strategies for business, we do in-depth insights, insight research. I realize actually to create a quick strategy, if you look at this, if you've got our customers' main challenges, so using my example, my customers' main challenge is they don't, they're unsure what, why, and how to post on social media. So all you need to do now for your strategy is flip that statement. So you say, so what we post about is with my help, with Picaroons, we can help you be sure of what, why, and how to post on social media. Now, I know that sounds simple, but it's a very easy way to flip the strategy and give you guidance of from now on, everything you post on social media has to talk to positioning you as the solution to your audience's challenge or need. So the next one, I love this one, is be creative. My favorite stuff is get creative. Now we know that we're, what we're going to do, we've got our guiding light. We need to get it out there. So I think there's three types of creativity. There's curating, which is when you share content from other people. And when you think companies like GoPro, GoPro don't create any content. Their whole social media feed is filled with content that their target audience created for them. So you can curate. And from a business point of view, you could be sharing articles directed to your target audience. Then there's creating, making the content yourself. And then there's collaborating, there's partnering with other experts who you know are of benefit to your target audience to create content together. And that's where you can leverage their network, their insight. So start quickly with creating. And what I do here, obviously I've got exercises in the longer version that I go into, but I would just recommend read my book. Now at the moment, and I hope, I want to take this chance to kind of say, I hope that with current situation in the world that all of you your families that you're all okay but what i've done at this moment is i've made my book a free downloadable resource so sambad i'm sure you'll be able to share that with everyone um but my book is currently free to download i want to help as many businesses as possible and an easy way to get their story out there so in my book you will find 104 very simple tactics and ideas that you can use to promote your business on social media so I could run workshops for you that run all day, teaching you how to be creative. But really at this moment and with the time we've got, I'm just gonna say, please have a read, please action some of the ideas. And yeah, Sam Pat, if you could share that after everyone, that'd yeah. be great. Yeah. And the next one's curating. So as I said, it's not always about creating the content yourself. You can share content from other people. So you actually see here, this is from my books. You can get an idea of the layout. There's two ideas here that you can all start doing instantly. If you're too busy to create content, share from someone else. The first one is if you read industry news, share interesting content from it. Just by acting as a news source of your industry for your audience, they will appreciate you. And then the second one is share an influencer's content. Share someone who's blogging or doing a presentation to, in your industry. Again, it gives you that time back 
of not having time to create, but then it shows as well, you're tapped into your industry. And my kind of secondary benefit of this, and I've got a whole training where I teach people how to curate, you'll start to learn more about your industry as well, just by actioning this type of strategy. And then what I always say here, to have a bit of fun with this one is, you need to know what not to post. So where we said earlier about that risk, and I'm gonna to go to the next slide, so that one's quite hectic. Where we said about risk, you need to have written down, we do not say this and this. We, so let's say when I was in healthcare, we would always say, we do not ever share who the customer testimonial is. Because in healthcare, private health information, you're not, not allowed to do that. I know a solicitor who again says, we never share data or statistics. And by knowing what you don't say, that will help you overcome that risk of worried about getting it wrong. And especially if you've got employees that work on this, you want them to have clear guidelines of, we don't say this. I mean, one that I do a lot for people is say, we don't call out our competitors. We don't directly name them. We might say things they do, but we never name them. So that's another way to always make sure you're kind of staying on strategy. And then collaborate. How can you partner with other people? Very simply, you could do podcasts, you could do interviews, you could do Facebook Live. I think Twitter Live, LinkedIn's gonna have a live function soon. These are things you could do, and then also reports. You could share reports, you could work together on creating a report. By creating these, you start to share the audience with one another. So schedule, so another thumbs up for anyone that's using a scheduling tool at the moment. I see a couple there. So a scheduling tool where we spoke about time because look, business owners is so different. Even for anyone working in social media, actually, having the time to actually feel creative and create is difficult. So I don't know if you ever heard of Hootsuite. Facebook has this integrated into their platform as well. There's another tool called Buffer. And what these all do is you create a post as if you were on the feed. So I could create now, like I've had a wonderful day with a load of pirates. I could then schedule that to go to LinkedIn, Facebook and Twitter, and I can choose what time. So that's very important to me because not only does it mean if you haven't got time, you can schedule a load of posts, but you might feel like actually your most creative time is on a Saturday morning. So that's what I used to like to do on a Saturday morning. I like to go to a nice coffee shop, relax a bit without all client work. And I would create all my content for the next two weeks and I'd schedule it there and then. So when I had a busy week, I didn't then have to worry about that. So I really recommend if you're struggling with time that, and also you can start to schedule posts for when you know your audience are online. So let's say if the only time you can create content is at four in the morning because you're very busy and you're up early. If you know my audience aren't going to be online till 8 a.m., you can then schedule that to go out at 8 a.m. So it's a really handy way to kind of help you. And this section, this is my favorite one, this is engage. So not just being interesting, but you actually engage with people. So we say social media, it's in the name, social. Be social with people. So I always say to people, think of it like a dinner party. If Sam Bath invited me around for dinner, and a few of you were there and I walked in and said, hi, my name's James and this is my book and I'm a pirate and I've got a business. And would you like, you'd go, whoa, whoa, whoa. Sam Path would probably say to me, get out of my house. Whereas if you came into someone's house and you ask questions, nice to meet you. What do you do? How could I help you? Do I know? When you actually basically become the best dinner guest ever, you tell interesting stories. That's when later down the line, you can go, okay, I've got a great person to put you in contact with. Or would you like to work with me? That's how you, as I said, you pull people in. This is really where the pirate thinking comes in because it's not about pushing, pushing, pushing. It's about engaging, speaking, having those conversations. So the next part for me is learn. And once you've thought how to be engaging, and just quickly, a few ways to be engaging, comment on people's posts. Every time someone comments on your post, reply to them. Always reply to because they've taken that time to so always respond. And then ask real questions. You see too many businesses putting questions out. You think no one would ever answer that. Ask a real question. Has anyone got any book recommendations? Which of these do you prefer, A or B? Ask for design help. Ask for thoughts. Like, let's get part of that community. 
So learn. So now you're putting the content out. It's about learning. Is it working? So again, a quick hands up. Has anyone got a measurement plan in place for their social media? See one or two there, but. And again, it, guys, this is stuff that we've done for some of the biggest brands in the world. It's not you have to do this. It's doing this is going to help you in the future create in a more effective way. So things you can measure, the first one, exposure. How many people saw your content? How many people actually, how far did it go? The impressions. But as I've said before, it's not about having how many people see it. It's how many people actually enjoyed it. How many people's behavior did you change? in a positive way. So for me, a bigger one is engagement. How many people clicked on your ad? How many people watched your video the whole way through? How many people clicked through to your website? How many comments, how many shares? That's when you start to see, okay, actually we've got people like this type of content. And the final one is effectiveness. It's if you can looking at, okay, on this day, so I've made for at the moment a gluten-free oat milk. We've made an advert for them and we've got the advert going out on Facebook and we can see on this day, 2000 people clicked on it and went through to the website. On that same day, the business had their biggest ever spike in sales. So we can go, okay, well, we now know that in theory on that day, it's because of the same thing. So if you can also start to match up your social efforts and you might say last month we posted twice and we got 10 sales, Whereas this month we posted 20 times and we quadrupled our sales. So actually we should focus on posting 20 times. And then you go down a level and you start doing this with specific content. So using the podcast chats with dad that I've made with my dad, whenever we put out a bit of audio from the podcast, we always got a massive spike in listeners. And when we put out just a graphic, we get a few. And when we don't put out anything, we get almost none each day. So it's learning, okay, audio is the thing that works, that effectiveness. And I always say to people, remember, as I said before, these big businesses have teams of people working around the clock, test and learn, test and learn, test and learn. You just need to keep seeing what works, you learn, you make the changes, and then you operate with them. But it's about, as I said before, no one cares enough about you that you shouldn't be making content. Just make content, put it out there, see what works and see what doesn't. And then in terms of the action points, so I'd like you to be able to take some things away from today. So the first one, I hope this has come through is, I want you to find a process and a style that suits you. So you don't have to just do copy your competitors. You might see there's a different business with a nice way of doing content. They always do videos that you like. You might find that you're really comfortable doing video. Great you might find that you're not comfortable doing that you might be better at writing so if you're better at writing you're not as good at video don't let all these kind of experts i say say you must do video you must do video for me you must do what you feel comfortable with and what you know is going to give you those better results so that's my first one is please from today kind of be comfortable in doing the things that you feel comfortable with and then in terms of some tools there's loads of different tools I could show you, but I kind of say these are some of the best ones that are free. So Snapseed is similar to Photoshop. So on your phone, you can edit the photos and make them a little bit more professional. Obviously, you could use things like the Instagram filters, but for those kind of budding photographers among you, you can use Snapseed as well. Unsplash is a very good place to get free stock images. So if ever you need stock photos to go with your post, because visuals, I think it's, Visuals, uh, the brain processes visuals 60,000 times faster than it does text. So if you need any visuals for free, you can go to Unsplash. Scoop.it, where we spoke about curating before, you can put into there a specific topic and then each day it will show you articles you could share. Answer the public. I actually don't know, when I originally did this, that was a great one. I think they might soon be offering paid actually, but what you can do with that is you can put in a certain question, so I could put in social media, and then it tells you all the different things that people are Googling related to social media. And it will start to give you some ideas of content you could create. And on that note, everyone, how to. Those two words are the most searched thing on YouTube, on Google. So remember that when you're creating content, create things that are the titles of most, how to do this, how to be better at this. 
If you can put how to in your title, they will always perform better. For display purposes only, that's a very good hashtag finder. Again, I always recommend not doing loads and loads of hashtags, but they're useful to have in there. And then for those of you that can't afford a designer to be doing kind of in-depth design, Canva is a free graphic design tool. And that's a really great one for you. You can use templates, you can swap them out for your brand colors. So I definitely recommend that. And then now, and Sam Path, don't know if you want to do any, but any questions, any thoughts, please do go and connect with me at Picaroons on Instagram. That's my LinkedIn there and the Facebook. I'd love to be connected with you. And as I said, this is kind of a 20 minute, well, I think a bit longer than 20 minutes, but a condensed version of a wider presentation I do. So I really hope you found value in this. I hope it's kind of taught you that that pirate thinking of focus on being interesting, focus on what works for you, and then that gives you the right to every now and then get those sales. So Sampath, thank you very much. And yeah, if there's any questions, more than happy to answer them now. Yeah, can we take the questions on the chat, please? Just opening so I can see it. So, so I can see on the chat at the moment we've got from Tarun. Could I touch a bit more on LinkedIn marketing? Um, I don't know if you want to unmute and let, when you say touch more on it, in what specific way? Hi, James. Uh, this is Tarun. Uh, thanks for your excellent presentation. Um, so, uh, I mean, you know, when you go out to your digital marketing, social media marketing agency friends, they're always pushing you towards Facebook and Instagram. Uh, yeah. Reasons cheaper, more effective, uh, better penetration. Tarun, can you sh put your video on, please? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, thanks. Can you see me now? Yep, yep. So, more so it's basically all of the things that you would want uh, when you uh, are starting out a business. But LinkedIn is something that I'm more comfortable with because I'm a corporate lawyer, I'm a co founder of yeah. a, a new startup. And so therefore, I basically know the importance of being net, networked in, in that environment. But it's also about, you know, not being casual on LinkedIn because you've got an image to protect. So it always scares me to be on LinkedIn, but that's the place I would rather be than any other place. But yeah. then when you want to try and talk to people, they'll say it's expensive, number one. Secondly, uh, it's got to be a certain kind of content. It can't be an Instagram kind of content. So could you sort of touch upon it a bit because I've been looking to find someone who could actually help us with LinkedIn marketing. Uh, unfortunately, I haven't been able to uh, you know, find someone yet. Yeah, I mean, when it comes to LinkedIn, I, I think that's a really good point. And yes, you don't necessarily be doing the same stuff on Instagram or LinkedIn. Yeah. What I say to people is LinkedIn is very much thought leadership. So it's very much blog posts and they're free to do. It's what you can also do is you can make, you know, I said about reports. So you could use your own knowledge and you could create, this is for everyone. You could create, uh, like my book, my book's 104 social media content ideas. You could create, here's 52 tips that you need to be checking for your corporate um, law practices. You could, anything tips, anything like that. So you could create that. And what you could do is you could then turn it into a report. So you can then use LinkedIn to say, this report, if you comment below, I will share this report with you. Or if you um, click at the link here and go through to our website, you can download the report. So to be honest, I never feel comfortable telling people what to do with their money because when I don't know enough about what your business is, I wouldn't feel comfortable saying you must do this. But on LinkedIn, really, it's about making high value content and then you could maybe pay to promote it or do something like that. So if you had a specific report, a webinar, that's what I'd always focus on doing on LinkedIn. And that's the type of thing that whether it has someone help you or not, but it's really, you almost need to think, what do you like? And I think for a lot of people, they will engage with a report that's um, promoted to them on LinkedIn or a free bit of education. Education always works well. 
So I'd suggest that. I hope that answers the question. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I, uh, Tarun, I uh, to. Uh, just to share with you, Tarun, I have like totally moved off Facebook, and uh, I have like I am only on LinkedIn. And James is one of the reasons is here is today because of our LinkedIn connect. Yeah. Oh, Most of the time, oh. what happens is people are just posting, 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 you know, and expecting a return in that. Yes. It is actually engaging, engaging. So what you could do is maybe there are a couple of top lawyers who are there who may be on LinkedIn. Go to their post in case they are not connected with you. Follow them on LinkedIn, and wherever the post engage, and you will find a lot of people commenting on those posts over there. Connect with them, you know, introduce yourself. Most of the time, what we do is we just send a general, you know, just connect. But when you connect, put in a message over there. Hi, this is Tarun Bala from so and so, and I'd love to connect with you to learn what about you, what more we can do. So these are ways to connect and engage with the network. Most of the times people think LinkedIn is like Facebook. It's totally not like Facebook. Yeah. Now, and you'll find a lot of European, American, Australian companies all on LinkedIn. Yeah. So that's one of the best places to connect and engage. Yeah. And one more point on that, the engagement. I, I had someone who they made £20,000 off of one social media post that they put on LinkedIn, I believe it was. Because yeah. someone in their target audience saw it. So again, it goes to, I don't know if it's I know, but assuming when it comes to law, like, are you chasing 20,000 clients or are you trying to get a few clients who are going to be paying you more? Because if that's the case, it's just about putting value out. I say to people, it's like fishing. All it needs is one, one bite, one connection, one thing. And that one thing, remember that Uber example, can lead to something massive. So yeah, thank you, because that's a great question. We've got some other ones here. Any tips on increasing your network on LinkedIn? I think that's great. That's a great question. And to be honest, I think that is what Sam has just said then is just put search. So you can search on LinkedIn for job title. So if you know this is the type of job title person I'm looking to connect with, put that into the search bar, find those people, send them a request. And Sam Bath said then, put an actual personalized I saw you, I checked out your content, I love what you do, um, would love to chat to you about this, would love to stay connected so we can share this. It's just about being human. And one thing I love with social media is always, there's nothing to stop you sending a connection now to Bill Gates. You could send it straight to, uh, to Elon Musk, you could send it to anyone. They might not answer, but you can send it. Uh, uh, which are the sites which you can use for making creatives for advertising companies? Use for making creative advertising. Um, and when you say creative, is it actually creating the content? I think creative means you know something like a Canva. I think that's what he means. Yeah. So well, they, so there's Canva is a brilliant one. I really recommend that, and especially from the graphic side. Um, there's a lot of. I mean, photo. Any of the Adobe, the Photoshop's, you do have to pay for them, but they are very beneficial. Um, any video. There's a few different video ones as well. The top of my mind, I can't really think of. Um, I'm actually going to get my phone if that's right, because I've got it on my phone, and that'd be a better way for me to show you. So I've got video editing here. Um, ah, quick Q U I K. So I believe that might be owned by GoPro. You can do content on there. There's another one called Splice S P L I C E, and you can put all your video content in, and then it will pull it all together for you. In terms of photography, I said then you've kind of got Snapseed's very good. Um, then what other ones would I say? I'd kind of say they're the best ones to be looking at because with Canva, you can do a lot of things on it. You can make animations, but you might need to pay for the £10 a month version if you want to go up a level. But where it's really good is you can put your brand colors in so you get that consistent information. So then... Okay. Effective marketing research. Priyanka is asking that question. Ah, that is a brilliant question, Priyanka. Brilliant, brilliant. So, really, all it comes down is to benefit. Why would? Why should I do that? Why would I take time out of my day to fill in your research? Now, really, you need to incentivize them. And when I say incentivize, that doesn't mean you have to pay them. But the different options I've seen used before is one: you could say, "Please fill in the survey." And by sharing your email, we will share the results with you. So then they get to see what the results were. That's a good technique. Another one is just to straight up incentivize and say, 
one person who does it will be giving a 50 pound Amazon voucher or something like that. And then it really is to make it clear of what, why do you need that help? You, if it's to a local business, sometimes you say, look, I really need this. Like, this is really going to help me. Or if it's to your target audience, you could say, by you filling in this research, we will then be able to better serve you. So it's all about talking to their benefits. And I know that sounds not very nice, but it's just true. People aren't going to fill in research unless if there's a reason for them to do that. What I also say when it comes to research is you don't just need to do surveys. If you search in the search bar of LinkedIn, of Twitter, if you search a particular word, you could then see what people are talking about related to that word. And you can get some ideas. And also, this may sound uber simple, but... If you Google research about, and then whatever that topic is, you might find that someone's done that research for you before. Likewise, I do a lot of uh, Googling where I say statistics about. So I said at the moment we're working with Facebook and part of the thing that we're working on them is the B2B side. And what we want to look at was stuff about employee engagement. How do you make your staff more engaged? So I just Googled employee engagement statistics. And I found someone had written an article with like a hundred. And I was like, thank you very much. So sometimes the research as well, that's another way to doing it. So Franco, I hope that helps, but that's kind of my thoughts on how you could do that. So just a message to everyone. Uh, we'll be going into breakout rooms uh, after this meeting. So we'll be having the guests also in the breakout rooms with a couple of the members. So the members who are there, please welcome the guest and let us guests know what they do. And then the members can introduce themselves. So just keeping it at this, normally we log out at eight o'clock. So just keeping this update for everybody. I hope everybody heard that. And because everybody's on mute and a lot of people are. Yes. So I'm going to squeeze a question. Yeah, you can squeeze a question. Hi, James. Hi. Uh, this is Ravi. Uh, James, I was very much impressed about your uh, relating on the topic of engaging with people at a social gathering and uh, how to get to brass tacks or to ground uh, level with uh, people. I would be happy if you could share a link or two or maybe a reading which I could read where you have put up some content on that part of engagement. Um, this yeah, this uh, session me, was a bit small. Yes, yeah, and I hope that kind of makes sense to you guys where this was a smaller version of everything. Um, but yeah, I'm sure I can trying to think if I've done any blogs on it so afterwards let me take a look I'll write a note to myself and I'll see if there's any blogs or anything I've got but yeah normally with that where I'd kind of go into more detail is starting to talk through specific techniques as we said of how do you comment for people how do you find the right people what type of comments could you do so you don't just sound like a robot you don't just go nice 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 but you actually put things that are personal and really it all comes down to as I said it's most basic just try and be as human as you can. Like, that was really interesting. I'd love to chat to find out more. Or, this is a great resource. Have you got any others you can share? Kind of human questions that are about benefiting each other, they always work very well. Yes, sir. I will see if I've got anything else on that. Um, and if not, then hopefully I'll come back for another presentation. I'd like to share a small out. matter on this, James. What I've observed is that if it could make a small pleasant observation about an individual which is not consequential to why you are meeting him but then it makes you get more uh, closer to the person yeah it could be a very That's simple great. appreciation thanks yeah bye That's great so ravi great. just to Thank share you. with you one of the things uh, which i do is so this very famous guy was there and he was wearing a very colorful belt and i went and i remarked that belt really looks snazzy yeah. where did you get it from and immediately, and I, I was managed to get that guy in my talk show after doing that introduction with him. So it's what 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 you what, you taught me well, Ravi. Yeah? You know where you're coming from. Okay. <laughs> yes, Hemangi. So I wear different kinds of socks. I got about forty different pairs of socks. Some call as a socksaholic. It is S O X I socksaholic, not a saxophone. <laughs> so and Hemangi always compliments me on those shock socks over there. That's amazing. Well, and if you're saying so. <laughs> And if you're saying socks, so my thing, and again, something that can help you be more human, I know it's hard sometimes, but by having a specific thing about your business, and this is kind of more high level what I train people, 
where my business is all about being pirate, which really at its core is being disruptive. Pirate is an easy way for people to ask me questions about pirate. And Sam Pathan, you said socks on. As you can see, I've even got pirate socks on. <laughs> so everything is pirate and it means people will ask me questions and it means that people don't, the questions they can ask can be more related to pirate. Sam Pathan, I know we've had a bit of a laugh with some pirate stuff on LinkedIn. And it's just about being as human as you can. I know sometimes we feel we need to be very serious. I'm not saying completely joke about, but you can just message things in a bit more of a human tone. So James, we know you're wearing pants, unlike your dad who was not wearing pants in that photograph. Yeah, so he wasn't wearing pants. I'm wearing trousers, <laughs> don't worry about that. I'm not as weird as him, but I have my pirate socks on. Um, Ash Ashwini had a question. Yep. Yeah, James, uh, so I was just wondering, while we are always, uh, the intent is to promote our business and our work, when we use, so this is specific to Facebook and Instagram. So uh, how how much uh, of it should we uh, put personal posts or should it always be a business post? Yeah, then, so I'd say, oh, sorry. Yeah, so in the regular affair of things, maybe if I'm posting one post every day or maybe once in two days, uh, how how many of them should be business related and and should I in between post a personal post or something? Just yeah, so that's a great question. So another part of this training, the more in depth one, I show an analogy related to pizza, and I say, imagine if every single day I served you pizza, and we can relate that to whatever your favorite food is. Doesn't matter if it's your favorite food. If I give it to you every single day, you're gonna go, oh, can I have something different now? So it's about mixing it up. So exactly what you said then, I'm not gonna tell you how often to do it. I think it really depends what you're trying to do. If, it is a per, if it's a business page specifically, so one of my friends, he runs a catering company, and I've helped him with his social media and he's a business page. So for him, we said, look, cause your business is catering, but we need to show the person behind it. You need to be doing five posts a week that are business about the food, one post a week about you. But then on the other side, if it's your personal page, you maybe want to almost do it the opposite. So five posts about you, one post about business. So it really depends how you're using it. But I think yeah. just by the way that you thought of that, you already understand the need to do it. And right. I'm not going to tell you which one, which way is the best. It's where we said test and learn. It's about you deciding what works best for you. Does that make sense? That's definitely. Thank you so much. James. No worries. Okay, so guys, uh, we'll be closing this session and I'll be opening the breakout rooms. Uh, so you can continue your conversation in the breakout rooms. Don't break. It's not a break dance room. It's a breakout room. So uh, the guest will introduce themselves. Uh, please take care of the guest. I'll be coming in to see what's going on everywhere, like the all seeing George Orwell 1984. So yeah, so great. So I'm just starting that. James, nice. Guys, thank you very you. much. Say hi to your dad also. I will do. Thank you, everyone. Thank yeah. you. Great Thanks. presentation. Thanks. Great. Thanks. Thank you.